Hello fans, it is your boy, Dalexman, and you are watching my review of Impact Wrestling's, yes, Impact Wrestling's Bound for Glory 2018. I thought Slammiversary was so good. A great showing from Impact that they earned my viewing for this pay-per-view. So here we are. Let's talk about it. In comparison to Slammiversary, it was not as good, but still good. Still a fun show overall. Taking NXT out the picture, this was definitely better than most of WWE's pay-per-views this year. So for that reason, giving you two thumbs up. Thank you for delivering when it comes to your pay-per-views. Whatever you do, weekly, whatever. When it matters, you deliver. And I thank you for that, Impact Wrestling. Keep that up, and I will continue to review your pay-per-views. Give me your thoughts about it down below in the comments, how you felt about it. Will it be as big as Slammiversary? I don't know. But I'm pretty sure, overall, it will be positive. Hopefully. Hopefully. So let's talk about the crowd. We were in New York City, New York. I thought the crowd was great. It wasn't a big venue. I felt like Melrose Ballroom was kind of small, but still, it had a great crowd, so might have looked small. The crowd made it feel big, and that's important. What wasn't good, however, was the production. Your production needs work impact. The camera crew missed a lot of important spots. They were out of place. Positioning was horrible, so that was frustrating. Also, there were a couple of wacky transitions in between video packages, interviews, and then the wrestling ring. It was very disorganized, really. I'm not expecting you to be WWE, but I do expect some level of competence when it comes to your production. There are some things that I cannot let slide. I can't. And you made a lot of production mistakes. Clean that up. Because I felt like it hurt your show. It made you feel Bush League. And you're not Bush League. You're better than that. First match was Rich Swan. Remember that guy? With Willie Mack. They took on Matt Seidel. Third Eye. And Ethan Page. Fun opener for fast-paced wrestlers. Four high flyers doing crazy stuff. It was as fun as you think it was. So Rich Swan and Willie Mack won. Got the crowd into the show. Can't complain. The weakest part of the show in terms of matches was what came next. So Eli Drake came back on this show. Don't know why he was gone because I don't watch Impact. But he came back to do an open challenge. He called out anybody from New York. I charged a New Yorker to come out and fight me. Everyone speculated it would be Chris Jericho. And it wasn't Chris Jericho. Far from it. It was a guy not from New York, which is even more frustrating. James Ellsworth. Yes. James Ellsworth. That guy. Came in to fight Eli Drake. Very lame. Matter of fact, it was so lame, the crowd turned on it. The way they booked it, Ellsworth was supposed to be the babyface in this match. He wasn't. The crowd did not like this. They turned on James Ellsworth immediately. Eli Drake became the de facto babyface, and then it just seemed out of place. I'm sorry, what were they thinking? Did you really think James Ellsworth would come in and get, what, a babyface reaction? Impact should have known better. They overestimated his popularity. They did. Yes, I did like James Ellsworth when he first came in, but that was when they were booking him as a joke. They weren't booking him as a main event player. They were booking him as a joke. When they started treating him seriously, I stopped liking him. He's supposed to be Eugene. He's not someone I should see beating legitimate players. Unless he has help, yes, but no, he shouldn't be beating anybody. He's supposed to be a joke. When he's treated like a joke, he's awesome. But y'all brought him in as this legit challenger for Eli Drake. What's wrong with y'all? Y'all got exactly what y'all deserved with James Ellsworth. So, at least Eli Drake beat him. That was cool. Thank you for that. But afterwards, Abyss, the Hall of Famer, congratulations by the way, came out and attacked him and choke slammed him through a table. So, that was, was kind of interesting. Women's match. Knockouts match, excuse me. Tessa Blanchard, my girl, defended her Knockouts Championship against Taya, the wife of Johnny Mundo, Johnny Impact. Really good match. I thought they went out there and showed the world that women can have just as good of a match as the men, which is good to see. 
I'm tired of women having matches that are good for women. It's time out for that. Tessa and Taya are showing you that they can have just as good of a match as any of the men on the roster. And I'm proud of them. Good job, ladies. Tessa is a national treasure. Don't know why WWE let her go. She is killing it. And thank you for putting the belt on her. That was one thing I asked for in my Slimiversary review. Put the belt on Tessa. And thank you for following through with that. She is awesome. She's doing great. Keep it going. Tessa Blanchard beats Taya with an awesome top rope code breaker. Oh my goodness. Next up. Well, we have a tag match, but initially it was a one-on-one -on -one match between Eddie Edwards and Moose. Now, Moose took on Austin Aries in the main event of Slammiversary. He was a babyface. He didn't win. And then next time I see him, he's a heel, which is like, what the hell happened? So the storyline apparently is Moose got hurt and Eddie Edwards didn't go to see him in the hospital. So screw Eddie Edwards. I'm going to join the guy that I tried to beat for the championship. It's kind of wonky for me because I don't watch Impact Wrestling, but maybe it'll make sense if I actually start watching the show. I will say this, though. I kind of like Moose as a heel. I like what he's trying to do. He's experimenting with his character, trying to find out what sticks. Keep it going. Keep going. I like the valets. I like the new brother power. Let's see how that goes. It might stick. It might not. Whatever. At least you're experimenting. Uh, Eddie Edwards and Moose ends in a DQ early because Killer Cross got involved. And that led to Tommy Dreamer coming out to help Eddie, which I love because it's a nice tie back to Slammiversary. Good stuff. And it was Tommy Dreamer and Eddie Edwards taking on Moose and Killer Cross in what I assumed was a no DQ tag match. They didn't announce that, but it was a no DQ tag match. Okay. I liked it. It was fun. It was fine. Eddie Edwards and Tommy Dreamer win. Then we have OVE, Ohio versus everything. Sammy Callahan's team taking on Phoenix, Pentagon Jr., and the man they call Cage, Brian Cage. Great match. Great six man tag. Phoenix is a boss. This man can do everything. And see, this is when production really got on my nerves because there were a lot of spots that Phoenix did that I missed because production wasn't in a good place to catch him, and he was fast. The stuff that we caught was great. But here, especially, you saw the production issues because there were a few of them I was just like, I wish I would have seen that. I wish I could have seen that. Other than a botch that we had, I think one of the guys from OVE was going for a top rope cutter, and Phoenix, who stood on the shoulders of Pentagon, he missed. Completely missed Phoenix. And there was a botch. It looked nasty. Other than that, great match. The ending saw Cage take 10,000 super kicks to the face. No sell. 9,999 of them. And then get penned by Sammy Callahan. Was that his first loss? Yes, that was Cage's first loss in Impact Wrestling. Ooh, Okay. So I'm assuming Sammy Callahan will take on Cage for the X Division Championship. Who knows? But I really like this match. And I hope you liked it too. <laughs> LAX versus the OGs. Concrete Jungle death match. So Concrete Jungle basically is when they remove all protection from the ring. And it's nothing but 2x4 boards. The ring post is exposed. Extremely unsafe dangerous match to have and everything looked like it hurt every suplex every scoop slam every superplex especially that superplex on hernandez oh my goodness and then the boards were moving when they ran it was very unsafe i was scared someone was gonna fall through the rain none of that happened but there was blood so they did this angle where i think Eddie and, you know, the OGs attacked Conan earlier on the night. And we were thinking, okay, they basically Nathan Jones <laughs> Conan. But nah, he came out and helped LAX win. So there you go. One of the most talked about things when it comes to this show was what took place before the main event. So Allie, who is one of the knockouts, went to the underworld. Follow me here. This is going to get kind of wacky, but follow me. You'll like where this goes. Allie goes to the underworld, which is hell, with the help of James Mitchell, yes, the one that helped Abyss all those years, in order to save her friends from Sue Young. She had to go into a casket that 
was a door to hell. And then when she came out, she was told by James Mitchell, because I helped you, your soul is mine. But yeah, basically he owns her soul now. Next thing we see is Allie carrying an axe, walking through hell, and zombie lackeys that work for Sue Young appear. And then she starts killing them. Like, hacking them up with this axe. Blood just goes all over her face. It was kind of hot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But she's over here doing the Buffy the Vampire Slayer gimmick now, which I kind of like. I kind of like Allie the Demon Slayer. I like this Allie better. I do. Eventually, she gets to the top of whatever place in hell they were. She took some stairs to a cathedral. They see uh, Kira Hogan. Is that her best friend's name? Kira Hogan inside a coffin. Soo Young appears. They have a fight. Kills Soo Young, but as you know, no one dies in the underworld. She saves Kira Hogan, goes to the coffin, and tries to escape. But James Mitchell tells her, Oh, 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 oh. I said I would get you in, but I never said I would get you out. <laughs> So here comes Sue Young and her zombie lackeys. Uh, and then next thing you know, Rosemary shows up. Yay, Rosemary shows up to help them escape. And while they're escaping, Rosemary and Sue Young have a Dragon Ball Z fight with beams and electricity and magical powers and stuff. It was full-blown anime at this point. We see Rosemary fall to Sue Young and her... Lackeys while Ali and Kira Hogan escape and then they return to the real world and in the real world Ali tries to go back in the coffin and Hogan Kira Hogan tells her don't do it it's okay it's okay it's okay and then next thing you know Ali snaps and then this demonic voice takes over her and she goes it's not okay apparently Ali is possessed now because James L. James Ellsworth. Oh my God. James Ellsworth has demonic powers now. No, James Mitchell owns her soul. Is it cheesy? Yes. <laughs> Is it over the top? Yes. But guess what? I liked it. This is the kind of stuff I get into. And I like Allie the Demon Slayer. This Allie is awesome. The other Allie I don't know. But this one? Give me more of this. Main event time. Johnny Impact versus Austin Aries for the Impact Wrestling World Championship. Last night, during the Abyss Hall of Fame induction ceremony, Austin and Morrison, Morrison, Impact, Mundo, Johnny Impact, let's go with that, got into an altercation. TMZ was involved in something that I didn't really see, but Austin Aries complained that Johnny Impact buried him on TMZ, and then next thing you know, they get into a brawl, break down the set, push over the podium. Austin Aries is screaming, F you, F you, F you, and everybody thought, was this real? Was this real? Was this real? And I'm sitting there going, ha, <laughs> hook, line, and sinker. You guys thought that was real. Hey, y'all believed it, right? So k Fape's still alive. Good job, boys. You kept kayfabe alive, and I appreciate you. So, let's just pretend that it is real. That was literally everything they put into this match. That was the biggest thing they had for this. The match itself, though, I really enjoyed. I thought it was a great match. Once again, Austin Aries gives us a great main event match. And I liked it because it felt real. They were stiffing each other hard. Literally punching each other. Kicking each other. Kneeing each other pushing each other, slapping each other. It felt like a legit fight, which was the right way to go. That was exactly what we needed to see between these two. Loved it. Thought it was awesome. I want more. Legitimately, I want more. Rematch. Give these two a rematch. Love that spot where they were on the outside. Austin Aries runs in, and then Johnny Impact jumps up and then lands on the guardrail and the ring apron. Like freaking Spider-Man. And then he does a moonsault. This parkour badass, I swear, he is amazing. I also like seeing Austin Aries die to the outside on Taya. He's a douchebag for that, but it added to the match. It added to the hatred these two had. But in the end, Johnny Impact becomes your new Impact Wrestling Champion. This has been a great year for John Morrison, man. Johnny Impact, Johnny Mundo, whatever you want to call him. He's been doing some great things on Impact Wrestling, in AAA, Lucha Underground. He has been killing it. And I'm sure WWE is kicking themselves they let this guy go. Well, good. 
Let him show you that you can make a name for yourself outside the WWE and make a run for it. He deserved this. I'm happy he got this moment. Awesome way to close the show. Him and his wife celebrating. And that's it. That was Bound for Glory. I really enjoyed it. Thought it was fun. Does this mean you're a boy deluxe, man? We'll check out the next pay-per-view. Let's play it by ear. I'm not going to make a guarantee because I can't promise I'll watch Impact Wrestling. But if the card is good, I'll check it out. But thank you for giving me a good show tonight. And in return, I'm giving you my honest review. Not perfect, but still an overall fun show. How do you feel about it? Let me know down below. Thank you for watching. If you like what I had to say, do yourself a favor. Like the video and subscribe. Catch all my new content when it comes out by clicking that bell. Like me on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter. Check out everything down below, including links to my Patreon, PayPal, and also a link to Pro Wrestling Tees to buy yourself a Deluxe Man t-shirt. Thank you guys for watching. You have a good day. I'm signing out right here in your boy, Deluxe Man's World.